Hello, I am Mari, welcome to my channel and today is my third day using Procreate Dreams and I'm gonna share with you what I have learned so far in the process of learning by doing. So, let's see two th important things, um, the way that you can animate in Procreate and then I will show you how the basics of creating a file. So here you can see we have I have here uh, like many elements. We have this blue dot that just comes here in the four ends. We have a red, really fast red playful brush here going around. Another one jumping on here at the green. And we have here like a blue dot behind dreams. Okay, so when you see this, these are only four elements, but truly there are only two type of animation happening here. One type is what is called frame by frame animation that is based on what what you, we used to do with, like with flip books, you know, that you draw, then you pass the page and like kind of imitate what is behind, but with a next step where we have a next. And that is like the traditional animation. And with that, I created the red and the green. So let's zoom in here. We zoom in like in any, any, any other animation, uh, application, sorry. And let's bring this so you can see it. Right now it's in a group and I will tell you later how it is done. But we can click here and see what is inside. This is, each one is a frame. So if we, if we see the timeline here on the top, we have an increase here. It is, what is the one here? So zero seconds, one second. So in one second, we have 24 frames. So the way you set frames here and the way you set frames in Procreate is completely different. So you can go and open a new file and the default will be that each, each uh, second will have 24 seconds. 24 frames. This one you can you can set it before opening in here when you open a new one and we create here draw and exactly when you open you go here on the name and now we can have the properties we can see the properties of the file. So we have right now 24 frames per second as I said the duration of the video like default is 30 seconds. So if I'm creating something for social media, like the one you just saw, like I was trying to, you know, create playful things for um, reels and stuff like that, or TikTok. So in TikTok, people like to have like faster videos, right? So I will not use 30 seconds for sure. Actually, at least from my experience, seven to nine seconds is what people watch the most and of course there are some exceptions but scrolling really fast and you get only seven, uh, seven seconds to nine seconds you don't you don't say anything in those is really hard it's different from youtube okay so let's say you go with 10 seconds to give you some time to do something and then here you can change and you can see that you have like, if you are actually doing only frame by frame, they recommend 12 uh, frames per second, which is really interesting. In anime, they have the, this preset of 15, cinema, that is kind of traditional 24, 30 for television, and then you can like go with all of this. It will depend on what you're doing. If you are working with, originally with a video, I will probably, like use uh, these two, they will it is region dependent though. But in a general matter, I will say any of these two, 24 or 30 will work. Okay, let me click down here. I will go back here to the one I was showing. So we have the frame by frame animation that I created here and I will show you then we have here in this one second, 24 frames. And the way I created that is by, let's create another one here. I have an empty track here, but if you don't have it, you, 
uh, click here and track. And then I start drawing. But right before I drew something here, I want to bring this down and then I have this flipbook. And in the flipbook, we can see the frames exactly as they are. So exactly when I'm moving, I can see here. I animated first the red one. So I wanted the red to be fast and the um, green to be slow. However, I wanted them to like kind of touch here so the green is scared and turns away. And the moment it turns away, this one is so fast that it tries to catch it and then it touches a little bit and it jumps a little, just a little bit faster to the right. And here it will be like it, it is thinking about it and then it flashes. So let's say we don't have this star and in this point, let me use the neon brush and in this point I wanted to flash. So I can actually create here the flashing point. If I wanted to, if I want to repeat this flash point, I just have to press and duplicate and that will maintain the flashing in the next, um, in the next frame. But the red one, the red one is moving exactly in each, in each uh, frame. But I, I don't, I don't care in this case, so I will duplicate this one because it's still very fast to have in flash like that. Now I'm doing frame by frame and it just moved. So I'm not interested, actually I'm not interested in this one. I will clear this frame and this one I will make it smaller. Let me go back to this one, it's still big. Let me clear this one. And I will put this behind Maybe behind, no, let, let, let it be in front. This is too big. It's starting to flash. It flash big and then not that big. Let's see how it looks. But first I will turn off this star. And that star I think is down here. So I will turn it off. And let's see how it looks. No, we don't have it here. When you press, when you press play, it plays until the, the timeline you have here. If you pinch, then you have the whole timeline. But I only animated right now until here. So let's see that one. Here's like takes a flash and then it goes away. I don't like it that much. I want it like more flashy. So we can make it bigger in the second flash. And maybe even like like an actual photo when you flash it, everything is bright. Maybe we can do that. But let's uh, let me show you then. This is the frame by frame animation, and let me show you now the keyframe animation. So in the keyframe animation, that is the blue blue dot I have here. Let me show you the whole movement. It goes here, goes up, left, down and it's done. Okay, let's go here to the blue dot and we can see here the keyframes and here we can move around the dot. Okay, then we turn off the drawing and now when I click on here I can see the selection. When I see that, that selection, I notice that I think I have something that I draw here in this area, but we don't see it. So it creates this around area. So I have this dot. Then I went directly to the last one. I created that first. And then I created the last keyframe because it's the same position. I want the dot to remain in the same position. So to create one, what you have to do is like, when you are here moving around, you just drop down and click. And now it's white. And when it's white, you can move it, you can move it around and it will change the way it behaves. If you don't like it, press and delete the keyframe. 
You can also move that around and start the keyframe in any point. So in this case, I move around. It will start showing me the position where it goes in blue. And then in purple, it is the onion skin. Onion skin allows us to see what is before and what is after. At the beginning, it was not um, it was it was not obvious to me to find it. Actually, in the first video, I struggled because I didn't find it my first time, and it is here in the timing. I start touching everything, so it is here in the timing. It's not that obvious to see, to be honest. I think I would prefer probably these options in another button right here in the middle. So here we can hide the onion skin and we can edit the color we want. So this is the position, the purple is the position after and forwards now is orange, but we cannot see it because it is difficult with the background in, in yellow. So let's make it okay, light, light blue. Now we can see that in this point where we are, the step before this one is the purple and the step after will be the light blue. We can also change the opacity of those. Like this one, I think this one is too dark. Let's change the opacity. And also you can see like more frames before or after. But I normally like to see only one and one. One before and one after. That's normally what I like. Okay. So this, to create this, as I said, it is very simple and it's kind of boring to be honest because you have to play with movement, but you can do it by changing the position that is the automatic position of the keyframe. Okay, here I'm moving from top to bottom. So if I want to make the ball, like make maybe a jump here, I can make it jump. So let's, let's try to make it jump. Here, I bring this down. Let me get, it, get closer. I bring this down, click it. And now when it's white, I can move it. So I will leave like that because I will be in my key moment. And then I wanted to jump onto here. Let's see when is the position. Around, okay. Let's make it jump until here. I will touch again and will, it will jump here. And I want my middle point around, like the middle point of these two, like around here. And then I will move it until the A. It will touch the A and then come back. Let's see how, how this tiny animation looks. So we have this timeline here. We can see only this timeline, okay? Let's touch here and play. We can see a jump, but the jump is kind of very mechanical. So every step in the middle of these two keyframes, and we can set the essence. This, what it does, it creates kind of like a nice curve of the movement. So when we see it, that is very robotic, it is a linear easing, but we can make it like coming really slowly and then go down really slowly. So it's in, it comes slowly, it's out, goes down slowly. If we want both, we use in and out. So I will use this one. And also in this part, we also want this one. Let's see how it looks. Now it approaches, in theory it approaches um, closer, but it's too fast right now to see. So we can maybe change that a little bit. I want it to be like a fast jump. So at this point in the middle, I wanted to almost reach the top. So we touch it and approach to the final position. And about here, I wanted to also arrive kind of fast. Okay, this one arrived fast, but I want this one to be also closer. Let's see how it looks. Okay. And now let's see how we change only that point. 
by changing keyframes instead of only instead of going frame by frame. So it's still very mechanical, but I will get into that later with another, maybe we can make it with another ball. That is something with keyframes, I think is for me is harder than doing frame by frame because in frame by frame I can I can see the movement maybe more natural than when I'm playing with keyframes and with the easing. In After Effects, we can actually control that curve. In here, I can't. It will be nice if in a future I can control that curve because I then I don't have to move the ball around, but I can like just set the curve when it's going in and going out and the way it is going in and going out, basically. The other thing you can animate by keyframes, exactly as we did with the ball. Let me, let's uh, let's uh, change the ball as well. In here, if we click on this button, we have the move action, that is this one, and we have filters. So these filters, we can also change it as a keyframe. So if we want to change, for example, the color of the ball, we can do this and change the color of the ball every time it touches maybe um, a side of this. Let's uh, go back to blue, but we're gonna uh, turn it on here. So we can move around with this. Let's bring it to, to the next keyframe. Let's see where, where where is the next, next keyframe where it touches the, the border? It's around here, it touches the border. Let's zoom in so we don't miss it. So it should be around here. I'm, I'm actually missing it. it. It is hard to, to see where, ah, here it is. I didn't hear it is. Here is our, the, the way, the moment the keyframe I place here that it touches, but we can see that it is there from, for a long time, maybe because of the easing we placed. I want, it to, I want the ball to change color exactly when it touches, so maybe around here. Okay, so we touch here, filter, and now we change the color. Let's change to green, then it will remain green until it touches the following corner around here and here is the keyframe but it touches the border a bit earlier so now I will not change the position I want to create the filter the color filter maybe purple and we can then move this around around here. Let's zoom in to see the keyframe here. The keyframe is around here, but it touches the border here. Touch, filter, change the color, let's say orange. And then we go to the end. It jumps. Well, we can arrange later that jump. Let's move until it reaches here the border. And we can, no, not move. We can filter and go back to, go back to blue. Well, it's not the same blue, but you get the idea. So let's see how it looks. Change green, purple, and it goes from the, the old who changing in that line. So you can see it's not immediate, it, it passes through all the colors to reach the next color we place. So that's also what you can do frame by frame and it's very convenient I think, to get some effects or lighting in some interesting animation. So this is the video for today. Subscribe to see more and thank you for watching. Bye!